Hi all, Pam here. Miss Pam with pie. Today we are studying pie, and I don't mean the kind that comes out of your oven and tastes so yummy. Mathematical pie. We are gonna watch a movie. We're gonna go over a short quiz. We're going to read an article, and then we're gonna recreate and do a worksheet. So that's our assignment. Let's get going on the movie. But before I do, um, will you please get out two pieces of paper? Uh, one will be for your assignment, and I want your name, date, and cottage at the top. And the other one is just for your notes, because you're gonna wanna take some notes. There's some equations and things that, that you're gonna wanna have written down, and um, and if you're doing that and you need more time on something, have your staff help with pausing the video or backing up or whatever so that you get the amount of time you need to, to learn this stuff. It's interesting. All right. Here we go with the movie. You'll never get a perfect circle. People have gone crazy trying to do that. Dear Tim and Moby, what is pi anyway? From Robin. Your question is one that ancient mathematicians and engineers puzzled over for thousands of years. They wanted to find the relationship between a perfect circle's circumference and its diameter. That's harder than it sounds. Perfect circles in nature are hard to find, so pi can only be derived using theoretical equations. So what is pi? It's just a letter from the Greek alphabet used to represent the ratio between the circumference and the diameter. If you take a perfect circle of any size at all and divide its circumference by its diameter, you'll get pi, or approximately 3.14. Actually, it's 3.14159265353 and so on. It goes on like that forever without stopping and without repeating. That's why we use pi to represent it. There's no way to write the actual number. Pi is an irrational number. That means it can be written only as a decimal, not a fraction. Lots of people have the mistaken belief that pi can be written as 22 sevenths, but that's not true. I bet you've used pi before to measure circles. In your math textbook, the equation for a circle's circumference usually reads c equals 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the circle. The radius is half of the diameter. So, if we take a circle that has a radius of 6 centimeters, we can find its circumference by plugging 6 into the equation. We don't need to be that accurate in this case, so let's use 3.14 for pi. The circumference is 2 times 3.14 times 6. 37.68 centimeters. That's true. Since 3.14 is only an approximation of pi, a more accurate way to write the circumference is 12 pi. You can get the area of the circle by plugging its radius into the equation a equals pi r squared. 6 squared is 36. Our area works out to be about 113.04 square centimeters. That's all there is to it. What is it? I hope that's fake. <laughs> Come on, I think we have some orange spray paint. Okay, so there you have it. Bye. Let's review the quiz, see how much we retain from that. You can write these answers down on your note paper if you want. You won't, we won't be turning this in, but I hope that you'll give it your best shot. So write down the answer if you get it wrong, cross it out and write the, the right answer. Okay, question one. A circle's circumference refers to its a, area, B, radius, C, perimeter, or D, latitude. Remember what he said about the circumference? 
It's the outside of it, the perimeter. C is the correct answer. Question two. To obtain pi, divide a circle's A, circumference, by its diameter, B, its diameter by its circumference, C, its circumference by its radius, or D, its radius by its circumference. I hope you took some good notes. And to obtain pi, you divide a circle's circumference by its diameter. Question three. Why do we use the pi symbol to represent a number? Is it A, mathematicians prefer using letters to numbers? Or is it B, the number is never used in algebra? Or C, the number is rational? Or D, writing the actual number would be impossible? Tim told us that it's D. Question four, which of the following is a true statement about irrational numbers? A, they are often expressed as improper fractions. B, many of them are repeating decimals. C, they can only get expressed as non-terminating, non-repeating decimals. Or D, they are often expressed as the square roots of negative numbers. And the answer to that one is C. They can only be expressed as non-terminating, non-repeating decimals. That's an irrational number. Question five. Which of the following is a true statement about pi? A, mathematicians discovered it at the beginning of the 18th century. B, its value can only be derived using theoretical equations. C, the letter pi was taken from the Roman alphabet. Or D, it can be expressed as the fraction 22 over seven. And remember, he said some people try and do that, but that doesn't work. So that one's out. Pi was taken from a Greek al alphabet, not Roman. Um, it's B. It's, its value can only be derived using theoretical equations because the number never ends. So you could never figure it out precisely. Okay, question six. Hope you're uh, jotting these down and giving it your best shot. If you have to approximate the value of pi, which number should you use? Is it 3.17? B, 3.14, C, 3.16, or D, 3.12. Well, the number they use to approximate pi is 3.14. B is the answer. Okay, question seven. What is the approximate area of a circle with a diameter of 14 centimeters? I hope you jotted down uh, how to work those out. So is the answer A, 615.44 square centimeters? Is it B, 43.96 square centimeters? Is it C, 153.86 square centimeters? Or is it D, 87.92 square centimeters? See that equation using pi, and you come up with C, it's 153.86 square centimeters.
What is the approximate circumference of a circle with a diameter of 10 centimeters? Is it A, 62.8 centimeters, B, 31.4 centimeters, C, 314 centimeters, or D, 628 centimeters? Yep, the answer is 31.4 centimeters. Question nine, the circumference of a circle is 75.36 centimeters. What is its radius? Round pi to the hundredths place. Wow. Is it 12, 10, 14, or 16 centimeters? And the answer is 12. Last question. The area of a circle is 12.56 square centimeters. What is its radius? Round pi to the hundredths place. Is it? five, four, three, or two centimeters. And the answer is D, two centimeters. Okay, we're going to read an article entitled Dates and Times about Pi. Keep taking notes. Here are some important dates in the history of Pi. In 1700 BCE, the Hrind Mathematical Papyrus, an example of ancient Egyptian mathematics claims that Egyptian mathematicians began approximating pi as 256 over 81 before the 18th century BCE. Hmm. And the next fact, C, 300 BCE, Greek mathematician Archimedes proves that pi lies in between 3, 10 over 71, and 3 and 1 7. So in 263 CE, Chinese mathematician Li Hu calculates pi to three decimal places. 3.14. Then in the 5th century CE, Indian scholar Aribahata calculates pi as 3.1416. Close, but no cigar. Late 14th century, Indian mathematician Madhava and Sang Marang, Marang Rama calculates pi correctly to 11 decimal places. Look at that. That means from here to there, up to the eight. I got it figured out. And C, 1600, German mathematician. Ludolf van Kulen calculates pi correctly to 32 decimal places. He's so proud of this that he has the digits inscribed on his tombstone. <laughs> Funny. In 1850 through 1873, British amateur mathematician William Shanks who owns a boarding school for kids, spends more than 20 years calculating pi to 707 places. The first 
527 of which are correct. He spends every morning doing calculations and every afternoon checking his work. Shanks is responsible for the longest calculation of pi until the invention of the computer. In 1910, Indian mathematician Srinivasa Ramanujan devises an algorithm through which pi can be calculated to an infinite number of digits. That was in 1910, pretty impressive. His method serves as the basis for some of the methods that are still used to find the digits of pi. Then in 2005, a team at the University of Tokyo claims to have calculated pi to 1.24 trillion places. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Pretty impressive. Kind of crazy. Okay. So now we know what pi is. We're going to do um, a worksheet. Yeah. So. I want you to recreate this worksheet. I want you to write this on the page you're going to turn in. So pause the video, please, staff member, and until whoever's watching has a chance to complete this chart. You're going to use the information given to calculate the missing value for each perfect circle use 3.14 as the value of pi and then explain it. And then down here, I also want you to explain it. Why do we use a symbol to represent pi? So that goes down here. So remember, each of these is part of an equation for a perfect circle. Use pi and the calculations. Hopefully you wrote some of those things down in your notes. And then come back and compute these other, the diameter, the circumference, and the area. You know the radius. Okay. I will let you look at that for a minute and hopefully you paused. You have it paused so that you can finish. Sorry, I just want to check something really quick. Yep, yep, yep. And that is the end. So you will use this worksheet and they explain it down here. Why do we use pi to represent, I mean, a symbol to represent pi. And you'll have your name at the top and your date and your cottage. So I'm going to leave you with this assignment. So if you need to continue pausing this, please do so, but I want to thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. I know I did. I always do. And I wish you a beautiful day.